Welcome to Getting to the Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today I am speaking with Master Tyler and owner of Bushels of Baltimore. Please welcome Aaron Jones. Yo, yo, what's up, man? We're back in the mix, right? Back in the <laughs> fucking mix, yo. <laughs> we had like lost time, man, but it's all good. Yeah, this is this is this is gonna be like I think I think in the, the history of doing this podcast, there's been like five re records. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I find that the re recording is always better than the original. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Especially <laughs> especially with the setup right here, man. Like like I I like wish you guys could hear myself <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that thing of let me introduce you to me. Let me yeah. introduce you myself. Yeah. So give us those, those vital those vital stats, right? So describe your work, describe your background. Um sure something you've done thousands of times, but give us the rundown for those who are not uh, dipped and initiated. So uh you know as Rob mentioned, I'm, my name is Aaron Jones, uh, master tailor and owner of Bushels of Baltimore. Uh, born and raised in West Baltimore, like from the mud, came a long way. Uh, left, went to school in Savannah, Georgia. Finally found my passion. I felt I found my passion in Baltimore, but like I really, really invested in my passion. Like once I went to school and identified like what my real love was. Um, <clears throat> and in the midst of it, I met a lot of people. Yeah. I really changed uh, my trajectory on how I feel about the things that used to frustrate me as a young teenager. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Um, and being bubbled in and locked in. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, man, like every experience that I've ever encountered um, as of late, I've I identified them as blessings, whether good or bad. Sure. Um, so like once I was, when I was younger, my mom, she really uh, couldn't make the ends meet. And I was an athlete. I was trying to play sports, roughhousing outside. Yeah. And uh, mom couldn't pay for camp. So, you know, I gravitated to the sewing machine. She used to sew to make the ends meet, like usher uniforms and prom dresses. And, you know, like when um, <clears throat> I couldn't really um, invest in the positive side of my artistic uh, abilities, I leaned into the sewing machine thing. And it was just about default. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a part of my, my family, um, like, you know, like their heritage. My grandmother was a sewer, yeah. you know, so I'm like three generations deep of people sewing. And it was kind of odd that a, a big man like myself, who's a roughhouser, is sitting in the sewing <laughs> machine playing in fabric. <laughs> like, so, um, <clears throat> you know, remarkably, um, you know, over time, like, you know, my family never gave me a hard time about um, enjoying what makes me happy. Yeah. And then, uh, in, in turn, um, I realized, like, you know, like, I really love, you know, like, clothing and identity and fashion and how people um, express themselves before they say anything. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, fashion and clothing is the first sign of, uh, you know, the first sign of acceptance. You know, and I think uh, I took it a step further where, um, you know, started treason uh, with uh, with Jason, met w one of the most talented people I've ever met in a long time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we really leaned in the fact that, like, we were doing something that was against the grain. Yeah. And we liked the idea of creating um, a space where people can be whoever they want to be without judgment. So, you know, outside of that, you know, we did a great thing. We really wanted to promote people to travel and explore who they wanted to be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, where I am now is a uh, direct reflection of uh, what we started. <clears throat> you know, I started doing clothing, and now, like, owning a tailor shop, I have the ability to um, allow people to be in their own comfort zone or creating that comfort zone for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, people don't underst and understand or um, identify with uh, their personal um, struggles, special with like their bodies. Yeah. You know, like that's a real hard thing to deal with, right? Yeah, I mean, w when I was fortunate enough to hang out at the shop with you for a bit, and just seeing like you kind of put it out there, like, "Yo, this is your world," like whatever, and just people just reaction of, "Oh, this fits. This fits the way that I like it. This is this is yeah. unique." And even before I dipped out, right? So for for context, um, 
I always run into this issue. I got bad advice on the measurements, right? Yeah. You hook me up with the measurements, and I end up getting that jacket. The, the, the pictures are online. They're, they're available. Oh, and word. You, are, you went all the way in. I, I did it. I, I totally forgot to ask you I, how I that shit the, went I down. The, I had the bandages and everything. Okay, I did my bad. own makeup for the first time as well. Yeah, yeah. And it was literally like, oh, I can get this. It, it, it shored up this, this issue I was having. So from a fashion standpoint and being there in your spot and from a tailoring standpoint, I look at you as a problem solver. Right. Yeah. So, so you know, like just to speak on that, highlight on that is, um, I, I look at myself as a uh, as a physician. Yeah. You know, like you come in this shop, like this is a non judgmental zone. You know, like we wanted to build a tailor shop built on comfort. Yeah. Um, I built a shop for people who felt like the tailoring experience was um a bit um intimidating. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, everybody who understands what a tailor shop is, anything they've seen on TV or cartoons or movies, James Bond, like you name it, yeah. like or uh, Kingsman, yeah. like it's like oh, this is for rich people, <laughs> it's a regal experience, yeah. <laughs> right? But um, to be honest with you, yo, like you can't really change um, being short. You can't really change being too tall. You know, so um, I wanted to provide a space of comfort, and that's why I like, you know, when I walk into it, like when I walk into work, I want to have like a very comfortable experience, so that way people understand, like, you know, like whatever you consider a deficiency is is actually a blessing, mm-hmm. and I'm here to provide a solution or a prescription for whatever you think your ailments are, um, and if you think this is a problem, um, I'm here to kind of tell you why you think it's a problem Mm -hmm. and help you find a solution or or stores or brands that you should invest in that'll help you um, bring out the beauty in you, you know, bring out the God in you, (laughs) right? (laughs) Um, And and I feel like uh, it's something that, you know, outside of being a designer, um, fit fit is first, Mm -hmm. you know, form, form, fit, and fashion. That's what, like, I consider that like the three Fs, um, if you will. Um, form is essentially, you know, like, how is it? What does it look like? What's the medium? Yeah. Fit is like, who is it made for? And how can this fit um, actually, um, you know, like, turn this person into a superhero? Yeah. And then the fashion is like all of the cosmetic, you know, the jewels and the things yeah. that we can get embellish to yeah. make it even greater. Let's say the cherry on top. So you I'm going to come to your spot, and I'm going to get my cape, right? And oh, <laughs> let's do that. Oh, let's do that. I'm all about I, was, that. I was talking with my girl. She was like, so when are you going to get your Walter Mercado cape? I was like, look, man, it's coming. I'm ready, yo. <laughs> Hounds, tooth, yo. We have, the, oh, we have the slits in the side, in the joint, so you can have access, yeah. like a t- Tyrannosaurus Rex kind of vibe. Yeah, you know see, what I'm a 6'4", 310-pound man with a wild cape. Well, like, yo, I was, was shaking. Yo, I'm all about that. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm, all about, I'm all about pushing the envelope yeah. and, and also creating... Uh, some new energy, yo, for for uh, individuals. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yo, like, if you like it, I love it. I mean, I'll, I'll say over there in your neighborhood, right, where you're at. I, I remember for my birthday, um, what is it? Is it the uh, 13th floor, the whole hour room, all of yeah. that? Yeah. I went there with what I call my Ric Flair jacket. I had the yeah. wild, like, white overcoat joint on that oh, went shit. down to like the ankles alligator boots and my girl was like having a hard time keeping <laughs> these alligators on the ground pretty much Rolex wearing <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the energy and I went in there to your, to your point you were making earlier you, you go into to a spot so even when I'm doing some of this like artistic stuff it's corny but I feel like my superpower I'm wearing my armor with my car hard on. Yeah. I usually have my pretentious rings. I'm not wearing them right yeah. now, so this podcast might be bad. I don't know. They're my good luck I mean, charms. Yo, look, I'm, you're gonna like, be good. I'm not gonna be good. Look, at all. nobody can see us right now. So as far as they know, <laughs> they you have on ten rings. I wear them. Yeah. You got on a fucking cape right now. It's covered in rhinestones. Man, no so, like, <laughs> so, 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 and maybe this is a point of question, but in terms of fashion icons, right? Who comes to mind when you think of someone like I like their approach? It may not necessarily be what they wear but maybe how they wear it or that energy is like oh yeah you rocking that motherfucker yeah um to be honest uh when when it comes to uh, fashion designers they really don't wear they really don't wear the things they make yeah they're really so in they're so endowed in uh understanding what the world um how they want to costume or fit Mm -hmm. the world you know what i mean like if you think about it um there there are people who um like they don't wear Jordans, but they love the way they look. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like Tinker Hatfield, like he wears Jordans because he makes them, but they might not really make sense. Like when you see them, mm-hmm. like, um, and the reality is like when you make things, like you glorify your ability to um, change the narrative or create imagination for something that you can't you can't fulfill for yourself. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think uh, designers' jobs is to tell people what's cool and not to. Um, follow what's cool you yeah. know what I mean so I'm inspired by like the McQueens mm-hmm. right like mm-hmm. Alexander McQueen and um, you know um, um, Pyre Moss you know like you know like especially you know like the people the front runners yeah Ye. yeah yeah is like yo I glorify Kanye West <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> um, and, and mainly and mainly because of his um you know his his like unapologetic like yo like this is what I like and this is you're gonna like it and you don't mm-hmm. have a choice. Um, what you design and all that stuff is all all based on point of view, yo. But I think the um, the mission is to um, really really stand behind what you believe in. Mm-hmm. And if you think it's cool and you think it's great, yo, like there's a there's a pocket of people who actually believe with you. Yeah. You know you create you like um, you know what we were doing like trees and stuff. I think like toward, you know, like back in, I really realized like there's a lot of ugly things in this world mm-hmm. that people could deem ugly. The, the the reason, the thing is, you need to find the people who like what you make, and there are people, there are a group of people that enjoy what you make. They think just like you. Yeah. You just don't know where they are. Yeah. Um, and a lot of designers that I glorify, I really, they might not even make clothes. Right, like mm-hmm. I love Coca Cola. The branding shit is amazing. Yeah. Right, like I like I love I enjoy Levi Strauss. Right, yeah. like I'm not a cowboy or you know <laughs> like I love their denim and all that stuff. But like their branding, branding and um, the storytelling piece and the heritage part, like I think that's that's so important. You tell a story that lasts forever. I think me personally, I would you know prefer to uh, leave a legacy here in Baltimore. So, like, when I close my eyes, I would love that something that I made or designed or built is um, respected and say, yo, it's from, that's from Baltimore. Yeah. Like, Shinola. Like, Shinola is amazing, man. Like, from Detroit, and they stand on that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, um, you think about, like, um, other great brands. Like, um, um, you think about, like, perfume brands. Shit like that yeah. You know what I'm saying Like the Tom Fords And um, you, you know um, It's just ins- It's insane Like how people's Mindsets are only Based on the form And what it looks like Or what it smells like Or what it looks like It's really based On the ideology um, Of what they're Trying to convey mm-hmm. You know Like if you can connect With what they're Trying to convey Like it's it, It's just like A poetry in motion it's like, like how Pharrell does. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like seeing sounds. Like such a crazy theory. Yeah. But somehow like he kinda can bring that theory to life to make you feel like, damn, you know, I can see this. <laughs> yeah, I can see this. You know what I'm saying? We're going to that brand thing, you make the um that kind of connection to like perfume or fragrance folks. Like I, I started thinking about what is it, uh Paco Rabanne. Yeah. And it's like Every like I have that what is it the uh, one million dollar the gold bar joint gold bar joint and then like the other thing that I don't know what it smells like because that's a part of it right. chiefly it's a thing that you have to smell it's like I'm not getting a sample of this right. it's like based on what that looks like and the energy that I think is attached to it like they have this thing out now it's like a robot yeah and I was like yeah I'm probably gonna get that yeah just because yeah. It, it, it catches me and it hits those other things yeah but it's not keying in on the thing I, it could it could smell like piss but I don't know but. You've invest you've invested in a brand that it's got me right. It, it, it's got right. me. I, I'm drinking the Kool Aid. I'm an evangelist for right. it. Right, and that's and, and I feel like um, you know the beauty is not just based on the medium or mm-hmm. the subject matter. It's uh it's about the packaging. Yeah, right. It's like how do you present it? Do you care enough about me to to make sure like when I unbox this thing, yo, like I feel like I'm a special person? Like, did you go to in, the infinite degree to make sure when I open this, it smells like flowers or butterflies come the fuck out? Yeah. Like, like, um, you know, like there's um, that's what that's what Apple does a good job of doing too. I think. Oh, all day long, yeah. like that sleek white cardboard box. I bought iPhones. You know, I'm not a technology guy. <laughs> I suck at it. But I, but one of the things in that with with Apple, right? 
they also do this. It's, it's not a sneak disc. Whatever the antithesis of a sneak disc is, right? It's like, we know you're smart, so it's going to be minimal instructions. Right, 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 right. And it, you know what? Like, I think it's also for... Um, you know, like people who want to uh, feel like they're on the ground too with you, yeah. right? Like, like I said, I'm not a technology cat, but I was never into computers or phones or anything. I was down to drawing pictures and sewing shit and <laughs> painting on stuff and yeah. ruining clothes <laughs> to kind of bring an idea like to to truth. But um, you know, like far as like you know the Apple concept is like icons and pictures and shit. Yeah, I was like, let's dumb it down. Yeah. You know, like like how can we real like really like bring people to where we are, um, and not feel intimidated about your level of Excel spreadsheets or, you know, like Outlook and all this other things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and Apple is a great another great example of like, you know, great branding where everybody can understand. Mm-hmm. You know, like I always talk about, um, and this might be like very left field, but. You know, you talk about, like, you know, who's the most famous rapper in the world, right? Yeah. And this is a conversation. Like, to be honest with you, Snoop Dogg is the best, is the most famous rapper in the world because your grandmother knows who Snoop Dogg is, yeah. right? And it's only based on his branding yeah. and his intention, his intentions to be like, yo, I'm the dog. You can see this dude every week if you watch the NFL thing. He's all day long. He's slinging Coronas. All day long. And beat a murder rap. You know what I mean? All like, day long. <laughs> all day long. And then, like, you know— um, there's a lot of other artists like there are brands so they don't have to just be objects yeah. they don't have to just be um, you know tangible things that you can touch but identities and um, the spirit the spirit and great design and great intentions are the things that trigger people's hearts mm-hmm. and I think um, you know the people that trigger my heart are the people who have um, full full intention to trigger your heart in different spaces and uh you know, in bubbles that you care about. You yeah. know, like some person might buy the same object as me, but I might only be intrigued by the box it comes in. Yeah. And you might be more intrigued about the shoes that come in the box. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm intrigued by like, you know, the text on the box and the and the writing and the, the little letter that you write. Yeah. Especially made for Aaron Jones. Yeah. That type of thing. Um I think those are you know, you kind of, especially in the world we're living in now, like, getting to a space we're getting further and further away from each other. Yeah. Like, where you don't feel like you can connect with the person who makes it. So, like, if there's an opportunity, like, you can get something in your home and you feel like you're actually a part. You feel like you're a part of the solution. You can make this brand bigger and there's a community. Um, and you connect with other people through the brand. Like, when you meet people in public and they say, yo, I like that watch. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, you walked in the door, I was like, yo, dope car, <laughs> yo. Well, I, right? I, remember, I remember I used to do it when I was really heavy in, like, getting streetwear, but I would always go, or, like, West Coast. I would always get a bunch of stuff West Coast or what right. have you. And then dudes were like, where'd you get that from? Right. I was like, oh, this whole thing? I, I would play it off like this that. Whole all thing? Yeah, yeah. And I know it, was, a guy. it was just like, what is it, like, uh, Frank 151. It was just like a bunch of, like, wild stuff. Yeah. It was like, I just remember. I was buying like seventy dollar hats all the time, yeah, yeah. And my closet is just filled with it because you can't really get rid of them. Yeah, no doubt. And no just doubt. dudes would just ain't run up on me. Don't know me. I have the evil eyebrows, and it's like, yo, yeah. based off of this, we're we're connected, right? It's like, oh, you went Crooks and Castle? Yeah, I am. Yo, it's like you know, like um, I've always like had this, uh, you know, this this concept. I'm not a marketing guy, but I always had this concept, like for a Valentine's Day uh, situation where like. You know, like a man or a woman or a woman and a woman, a man and a man, they meet in, yeah. in a space and they end up creating a sense of connectivity through something that they bought. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like that's how you start conversations. Right. And you never know, like the person you start a conversation with, you know, like give a common bond already through yeah. style yeah. And, and, uh, and respect for something, you know. And then once you do that, you realize like, damn, yo, this is like my first investor now. Yeah. Or like this might be my wife. Yeah. Or, this might be my husband. Yeah. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Like you never know. Like there's, um, you know, the beauty in that design thing, you know, is it's, it's a connection of, of uh, people, yeah. you know, like in, in uh, cultures. And that's, and that's the thing that. Like I'm, I'm working on this this interview in a little in a little while with this this, um, this business owner. You know, say uh, winery, and he was just talking about the importance of basically breaking bread, like doing cooking together, eating together, yeah. drinking together. That whole I'm setup. all about that, and it's about community, and it's a thing that I think the majority of like 
2020, we got to this point where we needed that mass reset to yeah. really see the importance of community and things like that. So right. let's let's make it a little bit more pointed. Speak on how, because because you know you kind of touched on it earlier. Like it's a family thing, right? Yeah, for sure. That, but speak on the importance of building and working within that black community because like I said I saw the folks that came in. you had a mix of people that came in but I saw yeah. people look like us that came in there too yeah yeah so um you know um I'm a very uh if you, if you know me I'm a very uh friendly person I am your uh neighborhood <laughs> friendly homie um I'm also um down to create an epicenter for people to meet each other mm -hmm. um people who have a positive understanding of like um, <clears throat> there is no judgment. Everybody's allowed. Like, there's no, like, oh, you ain't dressed like me. You ain't fresh enough. Like, who the fuck are you? Like, you ain't, like... I say that regularly, actually. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I was in high school, I was the jock. I was the most, like, liked and loved person in high school. I was, like, captain of the football team. Like, mm -hmm. everything you see in all the movies. Yeah. But I would have friends, like, that people would be like, yo, he a clown. And I'm like, yo, like, this man is the smartest motherfucker here. <laughs> like, and you you didn't even take the time to get to know him because he didn't wear Jordans. Yeah. Or his clothes was fucked up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have any, I don't have any, um, I really don't have any um, walls for uh, people who wear pants like I do. Everybody has the opportunity to be successful, and you don't know who people are or what they are, what they can be up for you. Whatever your blessing is for, like for you from them, like you kind of block it because you have this shallow, like acceptance radar mm -hmm. for what what the fuck you identify as great. Um, <clears throat> so at the end of the day, I feel like um, everybody deserves a chance until they do something fucked up. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's right? the, I think that's the thing that we see. Like most things that I think we encounter, that comes into oh, you're wearing these trash shoes or you're not wearing these clothes or whatever. It's yeah. from it's from our own people. So being able to kind of shift and change that a bit and have that idea out there, like nah, that's not kind of how that should work. Yeah, but you know, like I feel like I feel like the uh, trajectory of the world now is actually getting in a space where I can really appreciate. Like you know, you got. Yeezy season, whatever, and it's got holes in their clothes, right? Yeah. And now, like, you can't really, you really can't measure his success or if you need him or any of that because you don't know what it looks like. Yeah. You know, you got, like, tons of, like, trust fund kids who, like, really choose to be like, yo, like, I'm going to live in the street with this dog <laughs> and play a guitar and, like, <laughs> travel around the world. That's a choice. Yeah. That's a choice. That doesn't mean that they're idiots. That doesn't mean that they're... Um, vigilantes that doesn't mean that they're, they're junkies yeah. they just want they chose to be this way yeah. and you can't measure any of that until you actually like dive in and take the opportunity and the time to dive in to figure out who someone is don't create walls don't it? create no walls <laughs> you know like because you shouldn't have any like and the only walls you create are based on your experiences right like your experience is based on I've seen this before you know like you know I've got you know I've been man Born, born and raised in Baltimore City, you yeah. know fuck shit when you see fuck shit. <laughs> Being, and I'm not from any other city, yeah. but they understand the fuck shit from their cities, right? This LA, is true. This is true. San Francisco, New York City, DC, you name it. Like, yo, it's just like, it's fuck shit everywhere. And you not identify it because they speak the same language. But at the end of the day, yo, like, sometimes some fuck shit just comes in the form of a blessing. I almost want to call it like regional fuck shit. Yeah, <laughs> that should be another podcast. It, regional it, it fuck it, shit. It, it, Why don't you tell it. me about your fuck shit from where you from? <laughs> call us. Right? Call us. Tell us about the fuck shit. What y'all? What's what's the ghetto shit you see over San Fran? <laughs> so, um, so aside, aside from your work within like the clothing industry, like what are your other creative interests? Because you're you're very you're, you're a renaissance man in many ways. I think. Yeah, like to be honest with you, man, like. Um, I really want to focus on um, anything, you know, my medium is a sewing machine, mm -hmm. period. Like, anything I can do, I literally just left a tailor shop, I was sewing curtains. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not like, by any by any stretch, I am not scared or um, um, swayed by things that are considered foreign to me. I do upholstery work, like... You know, anything that can challenge my hands to kind of push the envelope, I'm totally down for that. To be honest with you, I just really want to create things, yo, to really make people happy. 
Mm. And when I say make people happy, you know, like, you know, like, well, like when I was a kid, having like standing in line for the Jays, that was like the glorifying moment, like, right? And you understand, like, you know, Michael Jordan had no intentions for people using their rent money to go buy his shoes. You know what I'm saying? This might sound really crazy, but if you love it that much, that means you've successfully tapped into something, you know, that is unattainable and you can't buy it on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Like you've actually like created something that people feel like is worth it. Um, and, it and your happiness is non-negotiable. That's how I feel all day long. Like my happiness is non-negotiable. I can't negotiate my happiness. If this is what I like and this is what I love and I feel like this is what I want to stand by, like I can't negotiate that. I had a hard time doing that over the years, like really like speaking up on like what I thought made me happy and what I wanted to enjoy. I just kind of, you know, go with the flow. You it's, know what I'm saying? A, it's a freeing thing there. So in, essentially in it, the, the I think the relationship, there's a relationship obviously with creativity and happiness. Yeah. So if you're, you can't really create. You can't like oh, I'm re- I'm creating at my at my best. There's there's an element of that. Like right. Some people they're putting out a lot of stuff and it's like oh I'm super depressed. Right. But it's like some people it's like look I create my best when I'm happy. It's it's a mood right. component to it. But there are some people who create their best when they're sad. And then the, the theory the like the beauty in that is like yo like if like you know like for example people like uh, um they're very uh they consider um what's the term um uh not last minute but like they um. Damn, what's the word? They uh, um, they procrastinate. Oh, procrastinate, got you. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. like people procrastinate, and it's not, and, and it's by nature because they kind of subliminally enjoy the chaos. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. And if that's your, and if that's your process, that's your process. I feel like, I feel like once you identify that this is the process, it's never a planned thing, but you're never flustered when it's the last minute because you know how to perform when you have pressure. And there are people, yeah, who are planners. Like, my wife is a planner. Yeah. Like, we're not doing anything. It's not planned. <laughs> and if I don't have it planned, and I say, yo, we're about to do this. But what happens next? And I'm like, I got it. <laughs> you know I, what I mean? I like, what is it? Like, there are some people, what's the term that my girl throws around? Um, degree of difficulty. Yeah. She's like, I judge how someone works. It's like, you know yeah. how somebody is talented? She always looks at, like, actors. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, you're talented, but I feel like you could have done more. Like, I give extra points for the degree of difficulty. Yeah. So I started looking at what I'm doing like this. Like, you remember when we were at your spot, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to find a way to get audio out we're of here. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, and that MacGyver thing. That's and the it was thing funny because, like, the sirens. The, the, <laughs> there was all types of shit happening. <laughs> Trucks going down the street, people walking in the door, the, the beep, 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 all this shit going on. We were drinking gin. We were drinking gin and shit. And he's like, I was like, yo, look, look. We're gonna get a lot of real sound bites, you know, <laughs> real time. But, but like you know, it's, uh, you know, to speak to what your girl speaks about, it's like it's organized chaos. Mm-hmm. You know, like and you know, I feel like um, our biggest blessing is actually accepting what is natural. Yeah. And what's natural, yo, is sometimes not what society deems as, like, natural. Like, yo, that's not natural for you, but it's natural for me. There are players, yo, who fucking go out and party, yo, and they might have the best games in their life, yeah. right? And they're like, yo, like like Dennis Rodman, for example. Let's get blitzed. <laughs> right? Yeah. Dennis yeah. Rodman during the playoff game was like, told his team, like, yo, I, gotta, I need a minute. I'm going to be a <laughs> And Michael Jordan went to go get him. Remember the thing that, uh, what was it, Chad Johnson? Chad yeah. Johnson? I was like, yeah, I eat McDonald's all the time. It's like, but you're an athlete. Right. So like, why does that? Why does it have to deem the level of your talent or the success? Yeah. Do you think he'll be better, yo, if he drinks, eats greens and smoothies every morning? You do that research, you figure out, like, really what works for you, but it's no, what is it? It's no golden bullet or what no, have you. No, no. It's all, like, it's really all mental. Yeah. Like, in a mental, in a mental capacity is based on how much you love and care about something. Mm-hmm. And if you care enough, you will push your body to the infinite degree to make sure you can get the job done. Yeah. And then that's the, you know like, and, and it might sound cr- it might sound crazy. I know people who like yo like I'm up early in the morning, you know like I'm doing the, you know I'm TED talking and I'm reading books and yeah. and like you know like yo like I I, I that's not that that's great for you. That's not that's what I'm doing. Not, <laughs> that's just not for me. Like I I work better at night. And that's to be honest with you, like my best, like my best time, my peak time for creativity yeah. and talent 
and free thinking is when everything stops. You don't have distractions. There's no distractions. There's nobody walking in the door. Yeah. Only if I if I want you to come to the door, I can control that time. There's no sirens. In Baltimore, there's some sirens. Yeah, that's a little different. But, <laughs> but like, um, you know, it just kind of goes back to, like, you know, your happiness is non-negotiable again, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're allowed to decide what your happiness is. And if you don't really pinpoint on what that is, you really can't monetize and understand how to lean into it. Because you're, you're like, you're so busy, like, trying to compete. You're trying to, you're trying to like, make sure you can be, you know, the next... You know, who, whatever you know, like Wall Street guy who's like up all day, and you're, you're chasing somebody else's thing. Yeah, and it's like it's it's not that's not yours. It's not real. Like, yeah, it like, makes no sense. W- when I talk to somebody about trying to let's say monetize, because that's always the thing, right? Someone yeah. trying to throw out there, they know your craft, your space better than you. So right, right there, that's already a non-starter for me. Right. Because going back to uh, chapter five of the fuck shit, that is a version of the fuck shit right there. Yeah. Of, I know here's this cookie cutter solution for you. This is what you should do with your podcast. And it's like I see things that are different from that. Right. I see things that kind of go against this this notion. Right. But I don't know anything. But it's like I know about my, my own space. I yeah. know this this version is what works for me. This version is what makes me happy. Right. This version is what I feel some, something from. This so other me, version is being pitched to me. Right. Not so for let me. me so let me ask you this: If another podcaster who has the same understanding of the process of yep. podcasting, interviewing, questions, yep. whole nine. If they come to you and says, yo, like, and they're, they're having a level of success, right? They're popping, they're killing it, yep. right? Does that, does, that deem, does that deem them knowledgeable enough for you to entertain their information? Or are you, or are you like, yo, that's still not my process? I'll listen to it, but still not my process. I get it. Yeah. All things considered. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All yeah. things considered respectfully. Respectfully. Right? Information is good. Yeah. Like, I had this same conversation with an artist not too long ago. Yeah. And uh, he said he got a piece of advice, and he's like, do you have an opinion? It was essentially him paraphrasing some old Patrice. And he's like, do you have an opinion? Do you let your opinion have you? Yeah. And I was like, I'll listen to it. Maybe there's something I can take out of it. Maybe there's some approach. He got a piece of advice of the value of his paintings yeah. would shift if he if he put his signature on the front yeah. it was it was more if he didn't right so he was like i tried it he's like i did the experiment he's like cuz it caught me right and i think that was the key he said it caught me so yeah. i think if you're able to recognize and listen and not put that wall up going back to it yeah. right if you're able to listen to it you might be able to take something out of it. You may be able to get something that you can put out there in the, the lab and see what works. Yeah, for sure. And but if you immediately just say, dismiss it. Shut it down. Yeah. Then you're not getting anything out of it. You just listen to a bunch of bullshit for no, no reason. No doubt. No doubt. And, you know, like, I'm a firm believer in the wise man know, knows nothing. Mm. Right? Like, a wise man knows nothing. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I personally don't shut down anybody's um, um, criticism or yeah. or opinion on what I should be doing. Not unless you came to me with with a problem, right? Like yeah. if I'm in the ta- if I'm in Taylor and you come to the Taylor shop and you say, "Yo, like I feel like this dress is a little too big and blah blah blah," and you know, like I'm giving you solution, plausible solutions based on my experience. Yeah. It's like going to a doctor's office and you telling him, like, "Yo, like." You're smoking. You're smoking too much. <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, no, it's not that. I only smoke a pack a week. <laughs> like you're wheezing. You're we- I'm I'm wheezing, and I don't think it's that. I think it's the it's, air quality. I think it's, I think I got mold in my house and all this other shit. It's like, bruh, bruh. Those <laughs> like, unfiltered Newports, sir. <laughs> right. So you know, like I feel like there are levels to yeah. understanding. Like level of expertise is why we use the term expertise and professional. Mm-hmm. And you go to them for that type of information. But I feel like there's a fine line, and like. You know, like there's a homeless man that might be able to give me some advice yeah. about um, some basic things in life that I might be struggling with. And I can't like discredit any of that because he's homeless and he has less than I do. But he might see something that I can't see. That's, there's always that, that there's going to be somebody that knows more than you and has or knows something different than you. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, like experience is all relevant, yeah. right? Like, you know, some people's experiences are, are like, yeah, I've seen this before. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, out of love, I want you to know, like, yo, like, this is not new. Mm-hmm. Trust me. 
You can get out of this. You'll be fine. Relax. I just tell him it's quicksand. You're going to sink. That's right. But, I just, I just but, tell him it's over. <laughs> right. But there's the other other line of shit, right, where, like, people are don't have that type of experience, and we're aware that you don't have that experience, and they're telling you, like, yo, you know what would be cool, yo? If you made, if you made a bag that had... You know, a sock pocket, and it had <laughs> and it had a uh, a had a, a little little bag on the side. You put diaper shitty diapers in, and you can walk around in it, and it don't leak. And then you can have. I'm like, I do. <laughs> all right, bro. Like, like that's what you want. If you want to do that, go do that. Put that seat, buddy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but like that's not that's not my mission. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and if you want to make something like that, yo, you're more than welcome to, man. But like. I don't think you're really listening to me. You know what I'm saying? And that's where it starts. Like, I don't think you're really listening to me. Yeah. Like, a lot of people are hearing what's going on. And they feel like, um, um, I, you know, like, I feel like as of late, um, I always speak about, um, you know, like, sometimes you, people holding space. Mm-hmm. My wife talks about this a lot. Hold space for me. Mm-hmm. And holding space for me is like, I really don't want a solution. I'm not asking you for a solution. I just want you to shut the fuck up and listen. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And then, and there are moments where you like, yo, some like Method Man said it best. Baby, just I just want you to rub me my back and say, baby, it'll be okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, like, you know, in hindsight, you know, like, um, the best advice you could give is the advice that you receive, and you can compartmentalize, and you can take a little bit from here, a little bit from there, a little bit from there, and you can cultivate the things that make sense for you for to move forward. And I think that's the best, um, you know, that's the best, you know, gift that we could all have. You mm-hmm. got two ears and one mouth for a reason. And then a lot of people talk too much, and they don't listen enough. And it's like, just stop. <laughs> so. I think I think that's a good point for us, um, and that's a gem actually. Uh... What's shaking my constituency? Rob Lee here, and I want to tell you about something sweet. No, no, not just my sweet voice, and you'll get back to the podcast in a moment, but I want to tell you about one of my presenting sponsors for this month, Waffy Waffle. Do you like dessert? I hope you do. Do you like over-the-top dessert waffles? Well, Waffy is right up your alley. Waffy has yeast-based waffles made with love and topped with everything from syrup to sprinkles, you know, the regular stuff, to ice cream and even cheesecake toppings. Treat yourself to something sweet today. Visit Waffy at www.waffywaffle.com and on Instagram at Waffy Waffle. And don't forget to tell them that Rob Lee sent you. So this is a new segment okay. that we didn't have last time. Okay. Uh, so this is a new thing I'm working in there. It's uh, rapid fire questions. All right, let's go. So essentially, the way that these rapid fire questions works, I'm going to throw out something, and you just give me the answer. I bet. No one additional word. context. I bet. Um, and it's one of those things. It's like I said what I said. It is what it is. I bet. All right. It's going to be uh, five of them. Favorite color to wear? Red. Gin or vodka? Gin. I like I like how <laughs> everyone's not looking at you. Yo, pull me some Tito's real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yo, what you doing? We got Tito's in this bitch. That's crazy. Yo, yeah. Tito's, y'all owe us some money right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, give me that cup. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> gin, gin for sure. Gin for sure. Right. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely a. So it was a Bombay house for me at one point. Yeah, uh, man. I'm all about that gin. That that flower. That flower we love. It's botanicals. <laughs> spicy, spicy botanicals. Let's call it that. The juniper berry. Yeah. <laughs> juniper. The juniper. Uh, I am so po- sure parched. Uh, favorite piece of clothing. Oh man. Oh shit. Yeah. A uh, hats, a uh, hats, yo, yeah, my, yeah. I'll die. For, I'll listen. Oh wait, <laughs> no that race. You right? I'm gonna go my hats, yo. Uh, last song that you listened to? Oh, oh, yeah, Drake. Yeah, Certified Lover Boy. Oh. Okay. Uh, I was listening. To, um, oh no, we were li- listening to Take Care. Wow, no, no. <laughs> I was listening to Big Crit joint. Oh, the, the Big Crit joint, J Cole. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
I, this one was funny when I actually wrote this question. I took it out. I'm going to throw you another one after this one. I thought this one is funny because of some of the um, – I saw a few of your pictures. I started laughing at them. Uh, proper short length. Wait, what? <laughs> proper length of one short. Oh, five-inch, baby. <laughs> five-inch in scenes, baby. Yo, it's ham. It's ham. Listen, I'm going to elaborate right now. Go ahead. Listen, ham season. Ham, ham season yeah. is Thanksgiving right now. Yeah, you ain't lying. And ham season, <laughs> ham season is every season, my friend. Yeah, you a grown man, you know, you will wear shorts. <laughs> that, that is that is wild. That is wild. I, I don't I don't I don't have the legs. My, my man put me out there. He was like, yo, yo. flex, yo, he big fella, like, flex, yo. Look. He was like, yo, what's up with your chicken legs, my guy? Yo, <laughs> I was look, like, let me live. Low, fuck it, yo, live it up, yo. I'm trying to tell you, yo, fuck them, fuck them long ass shorts. <laughs> All right, la- la- last thing, last thing. Um, <laughs> what is your most overused emoji? Uh, Mr. Heart face emoji. And I really don't. I gotta elaborate on this. Yeah, please. I don't use it. I have three heart shape emojis, and that's uh, my wife calls me. And it's three heart shape emojis, and it's the only time I use it. It's the only time it pops up in my phone. I don't send anybody emojis. To be honest with you, I looked at emojis the other day, and I saw this weird <laughs> shit, and I was like, "What the fuck yeah. have I been missing?" I saw a purple dragon, and I was like, "Who the fuck is using that?" Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's sure. <laughs> what? I was like, "Yo." I saw yo. I, I was just look. I'm dumbing through. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And they have all of these different meanings. Like, I see a lot of different color hearts. I was like, "I don't know what these mean." Yo, like yo, like you send yo, you send the wrong heart. Yo, somebody's gonna think something different. And I'm uh, and yeah. I listen. I am an old ass man, yo. We are like the same age. <laughs> old, no, not not in age, but like I'm an old ass man. I'm green to a lot of shit and that emoji shit. I'm like, I didn't know. I thought I just like the green heart. And they're like, yo, whoa, 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 bro. You don't send no green hearts. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> yo, why can't it be a silver one? <laughs> that's, that's my shit, man. <laughs> yo. And ain't no gold ones. You ain't got, yo, you ain't got no mauve hearts. You ain't got no mauve hearts. <laughs> I was a golden lord at one point. Yeah, yo. Shout out to yeah, Media yeah. Fam fans if y'all don't get that. I see you. I see uh, you. I, I see you. I didn't know you was in your stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's pretty much all I have. But I want to invite you to um, tell the fine folks about the website, um, social media, all of that good stuff. Basically, where to check you out, check your work out. And get some get some stuff tailored. Yeah, nah, for sure. So we're located on uh, 11 West Chase Street. We're right in the heart of Mount Vernon. Um, we're, I'm your neighborhood tailor. I'm pretty much you know, I'm I'm the guy that wants to make sure you're as comfortable as you want to be. I don't care who, what you look like, what color you are, what emoji you want to rock. I am here to provide a solution, and I want to make sure you have the best experience you know, you can ever have. Uh, my Instagram is uh, Bushlers Be More. Bushlers Be More. Um, that's on Instagram, same as, as Facebook. Um, like I said, our shop is 11 West Chase Street. We do appointments only. Visit the website, book an appointment. My schedule is on there. When you come in there, you will see me every time, and I am here to provide you whatever the fuck you want. Um, but not to mention, um, you know, going forward, we're also introducing made to measure. We want to do custom. We're doing custom stuff now. So if you want custom suiting, you want custom trousers, like anything you want, like we're here to provide that for you. Um, and not to mention, it's a labor of love. So when you come in, like. We want to make sure it smells good, it feels good. Um, you know, we're also right now we're also doing a code drive up until up until um, December 11th. Um, if you go to the shop, if you go to our Instagram, you can see a flyer. It'll tell you our shop hours, or just go to the website, go to Google. Um, it'll give you our shop hours. We're only looking for gently used coats. We don't want to give no coats to nobody that's fucked up. We really want to make sure people like can have something they can use. Um, I don't know how I ended up looking at an almanac, but somehow like this winter is about to be a cold one. Um, I sat with a group of friends, and you know we were talking about. Like, yo, how can we get back? And, you know, a friend of mine, Jordan, is like, he does coach drive in, drives in New York. He's like, yo, he wants to do it in Baltimore. So I was like, yo, you know what? How about you guys? We'll get people to bring coats to the shop, um, and we'll give them away to people in need. Um, not to mention, in the tailor shop, and you know, I'm a firm believer in clothing waste. You know, like, I want to really, really put this out there. Everybody has a bag of clothes that ends up in a bag, about to go to Goodwill, and it always ends up in the garbage. Let's not waste any clothes. Let's not waste anything that you have that you might not want anymore, but it can go to a better place. This is your opportunity. Um, specifically coats, shit. If you got sweaters, fuck it. Anything to keep people warm, yo, and they're outside, yo, in these trying times. Uh, we just came off a pandemic. 
and you know like who like we you know as as you know citizens that are capable and have housing and all this shit we really like people who are in the pandemic they're going through worship Mm-hmm. So this is our time to live outside of ourselves and uh we I just want to be a vessel to be able to help. Um if you got coats, you got things that keep people warm, scarves, who gives a fuck? Bring that shit to the tailor shop. We'll make sure we can solve two problems in one. It's taking up space in your crib, let's give it to somebody who cares. Well there you have it folks. Um so I want to thank you again for coming on to the podcast. Oh, a pleasure, man. A pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. Totally. So for Aaron Jones of Bushels of Baltimore, I am Rob Lee saying that there is uh, fashion, tailoring, art, in and around Baltimore. You just got to look for it. Absolutely. Absolutely.